Hello, we are very pleased to be here at the 13th International Conference on the Future of Education. We would like today in our presentation to advocate the need to collect data from homeschooled teenagers and me and my colleagues, Oz Guterman and Efrat Gil, are teaching and researching at the Western Galilee Academic College and we have been researching homeschooling in Israel for almost two decades. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the phenomenon, homeschooling is usually a parental choice in which children of various ages do not attend school but rather learn at home, usually learning a curriculum which is determined by parents. Homeschooling is actually a growing phenomenon. It is growing in numbers around the world in the past few decades and with this growth comes also a growth in academic interest. And researchers around the world have been looking at various subjects regarding homeschooling, such as the reasons that parents choose to homeschool their children, how homeschooling is actually carried out, what are the academic achievements of, home, of homeschooled children compared to children who are attending school, what is the legal status of homeschooling in various places in the world, what are the educational attitudes usually of parents, but it is important to understand that the data regarding homeschooling is usually collected from parents and national surveys. Very little data is collected from homeschool teenagers. And it is very important to collect data from homeschool teenagers because it is actually impossible to understand homeschooling without learning about the point of view of the children. And uh, it is important to understand the point of view of children at all ages. And also during the period that they are being homeschooled, as well as afterwards when they are already grown-ups. For example, we would like to present two researches that we have conducted in which we collected data from teenagers. The first one was a qualitative research uh, which employed metaphors. We asked teenagers to express metaphors regarding three main subjects, learning as a concept, homeschooling and school education. And here you can see the results of this research. In the first row you can see the metaphors and in the second row the polarity of the metaphors. So you can see very interesting metaphors, for example for learning, uh, which involve nature or beginning or movement, food and sport. It is very interesting to see that the polarity of the metaphors is mainly positive and a little bit neutral, but no negative metaphors were expressed. When looking at homeschooling, you can see also very interesting metaphors. Some of them are the same as the ones that were, um, they expressed about learning. However, you can see that the polarity, um, there are eight positives, six neutral and no negative as well. When we are looking at metaphors regarding school education, you can see already very interesting metaphors. However, some of them were negative. You can see regarding uniformity and prison and so on. And here you can see that there is only one positive metaphor, five neutral and a lot nine negative metaphors. So you can see that regarding learning, 
most of the metaphors were positive regarding homeschooling, some positive and some neutral, and regarding school education, most of them were negative or neutral. The second research was also a qualitative research in which we asked homeschooled children or teenagers open questions regarding subjects about their education at home. The result yielded four super themes which you can see on the left column here and in the next slide. And then we assessed the evaluation of these teenagers regarding the subject and we had some themes that were uh, expressed as advantages and some expressed as disadvantages. So you can see that regarding the context and methods of the instructions and learning in homeschooling, they raised several very interesting themes as advantages, like the ability to choose what they want to learn, the ability to learn what they are interested in and adapt the learning to the learner, the ability to learn relevant things to their lives and connect them to what they are doing in daily life and so on and so on. They also raised disadvantages like the lack of skill in taking exam. Eventually, when they will have to take an exam, they say that they have very little skills in doing this. And also the lack of external motivation. They usually learn from internal motivation and so they don't have experience in learning uh, from external motivation. The second super team uh, um, talks about the outcomes regarding personal traits. And also here you can see many, uh, not many, but all of the themes that they were raised were advantages. Knowing oneself, the confidence and the ability, the confidence in the ability to study, and also a development of desire to study, which is very important because later in, in the years, they will be able to study out of self, out of interest. So these are some of the results. In the next slide, you can see also super themes regarding family, which also raised advantages. You can see the advantages here. However, it is very interesting to see that the, the, when they refer to social aspects, they mentioned only disadvantages. They don't feel they have enough social preparation for life. We link this um, results to the constructivist way of learning and also to aims of education, socialization and individualization. These are the two researchers that we wanted to um, present here as an example um, of collecting data from teenagers that are being homeschooled. And it is, in, it is important in order to better understand homeschooling to continue learning about the point of view of the homeschooled children. Thank you very much.